Hey friendly foes! So this week at the Big Home Renovation, it's been all about drywall. We put it up, smoothed it out, and put on the texture. Now originally we wanted to hire somebody to do this, but the quotes we got were around $1,400. So we figured we'd do it ourselves. Uh, so instead of $1,400, we spent about $100 in materials. Again, a lot of labor, but if you're willing to try this yourself, it's not as bad as you might think. So I just want to go over some of the things you need if you want to do any drywall yourself. Uh, for putting it up, you just need a basic T-square. This big yellow thing here, that's like $10 at Harbor Freight. And to put up, uh, to cut it rather, it's like a score and a snap. I'm sure you've seen drywall before, it's got that paper layer. You score through that and snap it and it gives it a really nice clean break. Then when you're attaching it to the walls, you just need this drill bit here. This will countersink your screws to the same depth all the time. And that makes it really easy to go ahead and use the uh, joint compound to putty over those screw holes for all the stuff. For the seams, you just use a paper tape. This is just plain paper. Uh, again, stuck on with joint compound, you lay this over the seams between the drywall panels and then put more mud on top and smooth it all out. You also use this tape, this is kind of cool, for the inside corners. See, it's got this line in the middle so it folds easy. That's what you put on the inside corners. For example, right here, I'm next to the fridge cubby that we built. So right in here, this has that paper tape. Now for the outside corners, because you need those to be a lot more durable, you have to use this corner bead, which is this uh, thin metal stuff. And all of this is really cheap. I mean, these are like $2. So you just put those on the outside corners and then it can cover it with just plain old joint compound. This stuff is great because we also used it to do the texture afterwards, just water way down. Let's see, what else do I need to go over? Oh, to put on the joint compound, because first you need to smooth walls before you put the texture on. We used our old Venetian plaster blades. These are great, these are metal blades. I'm sure you can probably still buy them. We already had some because we're used to be faux finishers. Um, but these are fantastic. They're just thin and they slide over the walls beautifully. Slicks them out really nice. We got a fantastic tip from a professional drywaller about how to smooth out even further once the joint compound had dried. We were thinking sanding and we've done sanding in the past and it gets everywhere and it's messy and it gets in your lungs and it sucks. Instead, get a wet cloth. This is the cloth I actually used. It's just a nubby washcloth. Get it nice and wet, wring it out, and then wipe over the freshly um, dried joint compound. It'll smooth it out like a dream. It's amazing. This is like my new favorite thing, new favorite tip for home renovation. Uh, so once the wall is completely smoothed out, you put on the texture. This is John's new favorite thing. And we'll probably slice in some video of him using this. But this is a Wagner Powertex uh, sprayer, texture sprayer. John had a blast with this thing. He was over the moon with it because we tried like an old-fashioned gun the first time, which is like a pump action thing. It was terrible. It made a mess. In fact, we should put that video in here too <laughs> because it's hysterical. Um, so after using that, he was over the moon with this thing. Uh, it puts a beautiful, nice, even coat on. And again, we just used the same joint compound, watered down with water, and it went on beautifully. Uh, let's see, what's next? So after you get all the texture on, you do have to use a special kind of paint just for the first coat to help it adhere to the drywall. Um, I know this is covered up, but this is just a Hills Hide All. It's actually kind of a cheap primer. It's very watery, and again, it helps the texture just bond with the, uh, the drywall because otherwise it'll wipe right off with water. And then once that's on, you just need the one coat, which is what we've got all over here, you can see. This is all textured and primed. Now we just need to put the final coat of paint on and we're good to go. So again, we're pretty pleased um, that, you know, we saved ourselves like $1,300, maybe more, uh, by doing this ourselves. And in these older houses, honestly, the walls are not great anyway. The texture is kind of terrible. And that helps lower the bar for us whenever we're trying to match it up, which is great. So anyway, I hope this kind of demystifies how drywall works for you guys. I'm certainly not a pro, John's not a pro. We're just homeowners doing the best we can. But I think it turned out great. And if you're willing to put in some time and effort on it, yours could turn out great too. So I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. If you want to do this yourself, go to YouTube and search it. That's what we did. And there's some fantastic drywall tutorials out there that'll help familiarize you with how to put the mud on, how to put the tape on, smoothing it, all that kind of stuff. Do your research and then just experiment a little. But I think you guys have got this. So we'll see you next time. Bye.